नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत संबुस् दिस इज अ कंटिन्युएशन ऑफ द ऑफ द टॉपिक व्हिच आई डिस्कस्ड लास्ट टाइम दैट इज अबाउट द पोटेंसी ऑफ एक्शन एंड हाउ यू सी द सिक्स प्रिंसेस who were absolutely innocent about worldly life later became great arhats and so on. now uh, we mentioned that we'll elaborate on that in this discourse so that will be the theme of the talk today uh you see after the buddha uh you see arrived in uh, in rav in his erstwhile state there is kapila vatthu uh, with 20000 arhats the whole kingdom was absolutely shaken by uh, his presence and large number of people you see they their spiritual lives were completely changed their lives were transformed and uh, every day there will be so many buddha gave discourses regularly morning afternoon evening and after hearing uh, after a month or so you see the king had become an anagarika or anagami he had become spiritually transformed a very high state he was a rajarshi literally that is a, a royal you see sage that is how he is his life was and he decided buddha after his uh, completion of the uh, stay he decided to return to rajaga so after buddha arrived in uh, in kapilavattu and he stayed for a month or so or a little more than a month the king was spiritually transformed and the whole kingdom there was a complete change in the lives of the people the large number of people had taken to holy life uh, one day the king decided that if siddhartha gautama had been a king as the uh, surya vamsi chatriya they were very proud of their chatriya uh, status the warrior uh, warrior caste chatriya status and he say he thought well he would be surrounded by a thousand counselors of his own community of his own chatriya group all surya vamsa chatriyas and uh, now now that he dharma raja he should be similarly surrounded by holy men who are who do not fight with the world anymore but who have fought with themselves and who have won the battle of self conquest and so who have now become saints who have become enlightened monks so it is a, he told his uh, uh, all his community people he said look here this is the thought that had come to my mind so i would like from every family some uh, one young man to come and join the holy order see the buddha had arrived in kapilavattu on the on the full moon day of vaishakha on the may, month of may and he stayed there for more than a month and during that period absolutely uh, some kind of a miraculous time for all the people of the state the great spiritual uh, you see enthusiasm and a great spiritual movement everywhere and people to uh, to spiritual life in a very very serious way people who were violent they decided to give up violence people who were habitually you know those who uh, the thieves and the the uh, dockards and all that they gave up their uh, stealing and things like that and their moral life 
they completely changed. The Pancha Shila, the five Shila became the rule of conduct for everyone, all voluntarily undertake. Just the presence of the Buddha, the presence of the supremely enlightened one created such a wonderful atmosphere. Tea. Huh? Tea. Yes. Such a wonderful atmosphere that the entire people of the state, you see, their lives had completely changed. So now the king himself also underwent a spiritual transformation. He became huh? He became an anagami. I'm sorry, a lot of these uh, interruptions. So now, uh, hopefully, everything will be all right. So, after he had become spiritually transformed an anagami who will no longer be born in the Kama Loka. And uh, next stage he will attain the enlightenment, we say, of an arahat. So he decided, one day the thought came to him that, look, if he were, if Siddhartha, you see, Gautama, had been the king of this great kingdom, which was a vast kingdom in the, it covered the, not only the foothill areas of Himalaya, right up to the midway, middle, middle ranges of Himalaya, that is modern Nepal, a vast uh, area. And he said, uh, he said he would have been surrounded by at least a thousand Surya Vamsa uh, Chatriyas, the warrior caste, the royal, uh, royal caste people. So he would be surrounded by them all the time. They were serving his, as his personal uh, companions and followers. But now that he has become Dharma Raja, the, 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 the sovereign of truth, of Dharma. So now let him also be surrounded by holy saints, holy enlightened ones. So he had told his, uh, all, all his, uh, you know, the aristocratic Kshatriya people, he said, and the, the royal caste, as well as the princes, uh, there are different groups there. So they said, we will contribute one from each family. And that is how thousand of them had uh, become uh, monks. So Buddha went along with them and the king himself followed the Buddha and they went to, uh, to you see, send him, gave a very great send-off to the, up to the border country, that is the, between Sakyas and the Mallas. So he went, he, as he entered there in the Malla kingdom, he was staying in the Anupia uh, mango grove of the royal family there, he was surrounded by the thousands of monks. He had gone with 20,000 Arats. They were all of them, and the, his own people who had become monks, Rahula, his brother, and so on, and his son, then Nanda, his brother, so many, and now these thousand monks and so on. So now, after the king had returned, he uh, said, well, everyone, all the families have contributed, I am very happy. So uh, let us now take to spiritual life in a very, very serious way because ultimately all prosperity in the world comes, you see, only when people uh, follow a certain moral code of conduct. Unless there is a moral purity in the lives of the people, there cannot be prosperity. You can earn any amount of money, you can develop any amount of military power, you can develop anything, intellectual power, everything, but life will never be peaceful and happy unless there is the back of a, you see, the basis of moral, uh, you see, morality for their lives. So as he was giving this talk and all that, the, the, the next person, your Raja, that is Mahanama, he thought, well, in my family, 
my younger brother is a very, very innocent fellow. He doesn't want to become involved in anything and he's just playing all the time. And yet he's a young man in the twenties and uh, there were others also. So he went and told his brother, look here, one in our family must become a saint, either you or me, we are only two brothers. Now I have got this responsibility of a your other. So he said, what is that? What is that monk like? He said, you know, cut off your beard, cut off your hair and all the... He gave a full details of the monastic life. He said, oh my, it's a hard life, eh? He said, okay, if you don't want that, I will become a monk. You, be, you look after all the estates that we own and the great business industries and so on, about which I had uh, already mentioned last in the last week. We will not repeat all those again. So now, they were owners of vast, uh, you know, properties, agricultural, industrial, agro-industrial, all kinds of things. Very, very rich and Sakya country was known as the richest in the whole of India. Very, very rich country indeed. So, <clears throat> he said, okay, you look after. He said, how to look after? Then he gave a detailed account of the responsibilities of the head of that big uh, business and industrial empire. She said, no, 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 I can't do all this. I better become a monk. He said, okay, then very good, I will look after all this. So he said, you go take permission from mother and go. Mother said, no, nothing doing. You are my uh, most beloved child. I can't go live with you and so on. He says, no, 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 it's the honor of the family. If you don't allow me the whole, the good name of the family will be in the mud. So she said, okay, very good. You better get your friend Bhadiya also to go. He was the, he was also elected to be the, the Yuvaraja, but he had renounced. So in his place, Mahanama came. So Bhadiya said, look here, I have some duties to do, to finish, uh, a week or so, so then let us go. So that is how a week they spent in great pomp and uh, all kinds of ceremonies, six of them. That included Ananda, Kimila, etc., Bhagavan and Devadatta, all the six princes. So after that, uh, seven days uh, festival and all that, they, they, are, they stay because Bhaggo was uh, elected to be the, uh, you see, to be the Yuvaraja, crown prince, but he had renounced. So the state gave him a kind of welcome, uh, a send-off, with military send-off. So up to the border, the whole lot, they came in a very big way. And then in the border, he uh, told them, you go now, uh, I have to take, uh, you see, monastic life. So now the people had given them, as a part of the festival and the ceremonies, given them an upasaka dress of white, plain white dress. Now they were all the time used to very expensive princely uh, sort of attire, dress with all kinds of jewelries and um, all sorts of things. So now they, they were sent off also in the same way. So once they arrived at the border, these six, uh, they had taken uh, with them uh, their servant, their, actually he was their hairdresser, uh, Upali. All the seven of them entered the Malla country. Then they uh, it, the first thing they did was, look here, now we have to become Upasaka. Let us give up our things. So they made bundle of all their expensive possessions, everything, the jewelry, the clothes, this, that, everything, including the daggers and all that they carried with them, some kind of weaponry. And then made a bundle, each one, and gave the six bundles to this uh, person, Upali. He said, now you can live a very prosperous life with all these properties, go, enjoy. So Upali, he couldn't uh, disobey them. He was a servant. So he had to take. 
Then these princes, after giving everything, they felt very light. But they didn't know what exactly is this renunciation business. Business of becoming a monk. They didn't know the very philosophy of renunciation. So they were, they say, anyhow, our, we are ch Chatriya princess, we have to give up. Our uh, family honor is important. So the, that sense of family honor and all that, they left. Now Upali went up to a distance as per a short while. Then the thought struck to him. He says, what? First of all, you know, this Sakyan princess and this, uh, this Chatriya race, they are very, they are military race. You can never, uh, you see, be sure about that temple. If I carry all these very rich, uh, these diamonds, this and that, jewelry, I will be attracting many people to knock off all this. So possession means danger. So why should I, you see, by becoming a rich man and all that with this, all the time we live in fear and all that. No. This position business is no good. Besides, I now have seen right in front of me these princes, so rich and so opulent, just like you throw your, your spittle, you throw away like a spit, you spit away a spittle. They just threw away all these very expensive, very rich attire and all that, these jewelries and all that. Why can't I do that? So that is how he says, I too will renounce. I don't want any one of this. So then he just uh, uh, removed all these things, all the bundles, and put one by one in a tree, in a, in a branch, of, in the branches, one by one all this, and made a very loud pronouncement saying, I renounce all these. Let anybody who needs them, may they, may they uh, anybody can have this, it is his property, or her property, or their property. May they all enjoy this, may they be happy. And may I be happy by being, by having nothing, just become zero. Possession is the, is the source of all problem, so come on, I will become an That is how he left, and he ran, went very quickly to catch up with the princess, and he caught then once he reached there, the princess said, Hey, what's the matter? Why have you returned? So he, said, he told the entire story. He said, this is, These are my thoughts. Now the princess were absolutely overwhelmed with his thoughts. He said, Now we know the purpose of renunciation. Possession is the source of conflict. We have been boasting ourselves as princess and this and that and possessing so much and all that, yet our first cousin became the Buddha, gave up everything and became a supremely enlightened one, the saviour of the world. Thousands of people have now become, arhats have become, uh, you see, spiritually enlightened and transformed people. Now we have got the philosophy. This man has provided us with the philosophy of renunciation. Not to own does not mean just being dispossessed, but not to be possessive. The important thing is not just be, you know, devoid of possession with external things, but be devoid of possessiveness, the greed, the attachment, the hatred, the delusion. Those are the things to be renounced, and we will renounce. So Bhaddiya was the senior boss, he said, look here, we are a proud lot, you know. Good, we'll make this Upali our servant, senior to us. We'll go and tell Bhagwan, Bhagwan, you please make him, uh, give him the ordination first, Diksha first, and after that we'll take our monastic Diksha our ordination, so that he will be senior and we'll have to, uh, you see, pay him respect. He will be our senior. We won't be any more uh, malik or, you see, masters. 
and he being servant. No. So, uh, they decided on that. They said, we have got our philosophy of life. So, uh, when they arrived, they went and told the Buddha, this is what happened, Lord, please make him the monk first and then we will become. Buddha knew all these things completely beforehand. So he said, all right, come on. And they, were, they became monks. Now these six princes later on, all of them became saints, except Devadatta. Our story is Devadatta's story. So now, <coughs> and it is based on the Dhammapada Gatha where, you see, last time I mentioned, It is said, the evildoer suffers here and hereafter. He suffers in both the worlds. The thought, evil have I done, torments him. And he suffers even more when gone to realms of woe. Now this was the Gatha based upon which last time we discussed. This is the story of Devadatta. Now Devadatta, while Bhadiya became an Arat, as soon as they arrived in uh, Rajagaha, all of them, along with the Buddha, they were all billeted, they, were, they stayed in little huts uh, in the uh, Veluvana area, which was uh, with a vast, uh, you know, forest behind. There were uh, hundreds of little, little huts there. So they settled down, these princes. Now, Bhadiya became an Arhat. Devija, he was able to recall his past lives. Then uh, the Dibha Chakku, the, the divine vision, he could see uh, the lives of others, how people, live, you know, beings are born and then they die, and how they are reborn again, what kind of karma leads to, what kind of rebirth, and all those. And he was a very powerful, uh, enlightened arahat he became. Now, so also Anuruddha was so innocent, he didn't know how, from where rice came. Last time we mentioned. From where food came, he didn't know. And uh, so this innocent prince now becomes a very powerful, one of the preeminent arhats with reference to Dipa Chakku. He could reach any, any uh, state of existence anywhere. Brahma Loka, Deva Loka, everywhere, and with his divine vision he could tell exactly where a person is born after death and what kind of karma led to that kind of existence and so on. A very uh, extraordinary ability he had. Next only to Mughalana, in that particular, he specialized in that particular power. So then Ananda became a Sotapanna with very great uh, supernormal ability of uh, memory. He could remember every word of the Buddha. And that is how he recalled whatever the Buddha had said during 45 years of his mission of compassion. During the first council after the Lord passed away, the monks all...